everyone, it's Jacqueline. Welcome to my video for the top 20 of the Face Awards. I cannot believe we made it into the top 20. I am freaking out. Thank you guys so much for voting. This is a fan voted contest, so this would not have been possible without you guys. Now, if you guys do want to see me move on to the next round, vote for me starting today all the way up until June 21st at faceawards.com and help me get into the top 12. So the theme for this challenge was machinist, and this is the look that I came up with. So let's hop into the tutorial. Okay, so to get started, I'm gonna make the prosthetic, and you guys know that I love me some prosthetics. So I'm gonna take some liquid latex, and I'm just gonna stipple that all over the face of my life cast. So we're basically gonna be creating a mask of our face. So we want there to be a very definitive edge of where the latex ends around the perimeter. So you don't want it to blend out like normal, you want it to kind of be a bit harsh. So I actually ended up doing six layers of latex, and on the final layer, I actually took a paintbrush and just kind of smoothed it out. Now do be warned, latex will ruin your brush, so make that a throwaway brush. And then once everything is blow dried and set, I'm just gonna go in with my alcohol activated palettes, and I'm just gonna kind of do an underpainting and get like a base color going for the prosthetic. Now I did actually set up a mirror in front of me, so that way I can look at my bare face and see where my skin kind of holds pigment. So I'm taking some red colors and adding that and stippling that onto my cheeks. And I'm also taking some blues and some purples and adding those tones around my eyes. The goal is to make this look as realistic as possible, so I'm gonna add all the tones that my skin has. Next up is one of my favorite steps. It's basically where you get to splatter paint everywhere. So I'm just gonna take my brush and saturate it with some alcohol and just kind of flick the paint all over the prosthetic. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of warmth and dimension into my skin. So I'm gonna add some bronzier tones and just kind of carve up my cheeks a little bit. Next up, it is time for brows. So I'm just kind of feeling on the prosthetic where the brow bone is and then also aligning that to my own face so that way I can kind of look in the mirror and try to make my brows look as realistic and as normal as possible. So I'm just taking some mid-tone browns and I'm just kind of feathering that where the brow should be. I'm also taking some darker blacks and some shadows and creating some depth as well as some lighter colors to highlight. Now we are gonna be adding some hairs to this afterwards but you do want your base to be as symmetrical and as well painted as you can. Then I'm just adding a bit of an eyeline that way I have some balance while I finish up the rest of the face. Then it's time for Jacqueline 2.0 to get some nostrils. So I'm just shading in some nostrils and adding a bit of dimension onto my lips as well. So this is just all about adding shadows and adding highlights to bring a bit of life to the prosthetic. I'm also gonna take that contour color and just add a bit of dimension around my nostrils, my cupid's bow, and kind of below my lip, above my chin, that little area there. Oh, and we cannot forget about the eye bags as well as the crease. Now I'm starting to add a bit of like makeup colors onto my crease and kind of doing it in the style that I would do my eyeshadow as well as my blush. I'm adding a bit of a corally color onto my cheeks. And I'm just gonna add a bit of a lighter shade towards the center of my eye and make it appear a bit more round. Okay, so next up I'm gonna take the SFX setting powder and I'm gonna peel off the prosthetic. So I've got my brush and I've got it loaded with powder and I'm just kind of gently dusting away and gently peeling and lifting very slowly. Do not pull, do not rip it. We just put so much work into this. So make sure you've got all the creases powdered as well so that way nothing's gonna stick to itself. And now we're gonna add some hair. So I've got some crepe hair here and I picked out the brown color because my eyebrows are brown. And I am just gonna take little bits of that, kind of feather out where the hair is and loosen it up a bit so that way it's not packed so tightly and gently glue it down onto the eyebrows. So I have some prosthetic adhesive already on the brows. That way the hair will stick perfectly and I can just kind of trim them in place. Now it is important, you do wanna put the brows in the direction that your natural brows grow. So my brows grow kind of upward and slightly outward, so that's exactly how I place them. Temporarily become a brow artist, give them a little trim, get the brows looking good. And now for lashes, I'm just gonna glue them on like you would a regular human face, just a little lash glue, stick them on and you're good to go. Next up, I'm gonna take some liquid liner, and this one here is the That's The Point Hella Fine Liner. And keep this one very close, because we will be using this a lot in this tutorial. So I'm just gonna kind of darken up the lash line, and then what we're gonna do is cut away the prosthetic. Like I said, we want the border to be really harsh and very defined. Now that the base of this prosthetic is looking good, it's time to add some real makeup on top. So I'm just gonna go in with colors that I would normally wear. So a lip color that I would normally wear, a cheek color, and an eye look. Next up, I'm gonna highlight, and this adds so much dimension, it makes it look so much more real. So I would definitely go heavy-handed on the highlight. So I did my cupid's bow, my cheekbones, and I also was gonna do my inner corner, but then I realized I didn't make an inner corner crease, so I'm quickly just shading that in, and then popping some highlight on top of that. Then I'm just gonna continue doing the eye makeup. So I have some cream paints on the back of my hand, and I'm just kind of shading and adding some dimension, making the crease a bit darker and deeper. 
Then with the creams, I created a contour color and I'm just kind of sculpting my cheeks as well as the eyes. And I'm also contouring the nose a bit. I found that the nose didn't have as much definition as I wanted it to, so I'm creating a bit more definition around the nostrils as well as contouring the bridge of my nose. Then we're just gonna do a little nostril touch up. And there we go, Jaclyn 2.0 has officially been born. This is absolutely terrifying, but cool at the same time. Okay, so now it is time for the actual application. So we are gonna be putting on a bald cap, so I'm going to slick my hair back with some Redken Super Strong Sculpting Gel, and I'm just smothering my hair in that. We want the hair to be absolutely smooth with no bumps. And then with the bald cap, I'm just gonna take a hair dryer, run some heat in it, make sure that there's no creases. That way it's all gonna be super smooth and super bald and super shiny. Then I'm just gonna slide the bald cap onto my head, and this was actually really large on me, which is weird because I've got a big noggin, but regardless, I'm just gonna trace some marks where I know I can definitely cut off some excess. That way I can actually see while I'm working. So I'm just blindly cutting here. That's not a safe practice. Do not do that. Okay, so now that I can actually see what's going on, I'm gonna take some prosthetic adhesive and I'm just gonna glue my forehead in the bald cap. You want the glue to be tacky and dry, so I'm just gonna heat that with a blow dryer and then smooth and press down. So you're just gonna wanna repeat that process of gluing, drying, and smoothing down all around the perimeter of your head. Now bald caps are interesting because you normally need an assistant or someone to help you out with because they can be a little finicky and a little fussy, but they are possible, so just go slow and steady, and it's definitely worth the effort to make sure things are looking perfect. Now, especially if you are alone, doing your ear can be a little tricky, so what I like to do is take acetone on a cotton bud, and I'm just kind of melting away the bald cap, and then I'm just gonna pop my ear through that hole, and it just kind of makes it a bit easier to line up where everything's gonna sit. What's so interesting about bald caps is that you can't really tell when they're done well because it just looks like you're bald, it just looks like someone has no hair. But when they're done wrong, you can definitely tell. You'll see pulling, increasing, and creping, or the color match will be weird, so it's definitely worth taking your time to make sure everything is looking good. So once everything is glued down and secure, we're gonna start by melting away the edges of the bald cap. So I'm taking some acetone and slowly rolling away the bald cap onto the skin. So you basically wanna get like a very gradual slope from the bald cap to your skin, and it'll make this seamless edge that is honestly undetectable. So I think we're looking pretty good. Now we're gonna go into coloring. So we're gonna powder the skin, and then we're basically gonna go into the same process as what we did with the prosthetic. So we're gonna start off with a base color. Instead of using alcohol activated paints, I'm actually using some cream paints here, but we're gonna go in with the alcohol activated paints in just a second, don't you worry. So once you're all set in place and you've laughed at how large your head looks, you can move on to the alcohol activated paints. So we're gonna go back to the splatter technique and just add different layers of pinks, reds, blues, greens, yellows, all the different tones that make up my skin. This is another step of bald caps that you definitely do not wanna rush. You wanna work in slow layers. I ended up spending a good 25 minutes just coloring this correctly because I wanted it to be undetectable to the eye and I wanted it to really seamlessly fade into my skin. Okay, so we are officially looking bald. It is time to move on to the machine makeup. So we're gonna start by mapping out where the makeup is gonna go. So with the prosthetic, I'm just lightly outlining where the makeup needs to be. Then I'm gonna take the NYX Professional Makeup SFX Cream Color. This one here is in silver. And I'm gonna start by warming this up onto the skin as well as kind of roughly marking the perimeter just so I can see where we're going with this a bit better. Now before we paint the entire face, I am gonna block out my brows. So I'm just taking a washable glue stick, smoothing over my brows, and then once they're dry, I'm gonna set them and lock them in place with powder. Okay, so now we are officially ready to transform into a sheet of metal. So I'm gonna take that cream color and trace the perimeter of my face, and then going in with a flat foundation brush, I'm gonna fill in the inside of it. And the thing with metallics, you wanna make sure to avoid any patchiness, is to make sure that you're working slowly and building up in layers. We also wanna make sure that no skin is peeking through, so make sure you get everything, even up your nostrils. That's right, get all up in there. And yeah, can confirm, I definitely had metallic snot for a few days after this, but honestly, it was pretty cool. I have no regrets. So once we set that all in place, I'm gonna move on to the black cream color paint, and now we're gonna start shading and adding some dimension. So we're gonna start at the perimeter, depositing the most amount of pigment there, and then gradually fading it in. So once we're done with the first round of blending, I'm gonna go back in with that super fine little liner, actually the hella fine liner, and we're gonna add a bit more contrast and just clean up the edges. Now before we move on to the rest of the detail work, I am gonna pop in the colored contacts because I clearly struggle with contacts and I cry every single time, so I didn't wanna ruin all the work, so we're gonna get that out of the way. 
Okay, we made it through, we're good. We're gonna move on to the detailing. So basically what we're gonna do is draw the outlines of where we want all the metal sheets to be. So the key for this look is to make it nice and symmetrical and really balanced. It'll just add to the effect and make it a lot more punchy. So take your time at really making sure everything is aligned and um, equal on both sides. So once all the lines are in place, we're gonna basically repeat the exact same process to what we did on the perimeter. So we're just gonna go in with the cream, start shading it, and making it have a bit more depth. So once I'm done with that, I'm just gonna take a clean blending brush and I'm just gonna diffuse that black even more. I want the gradient to be super seamless, so I'm just gonna really buff it out and make sure that it transitions really smoothly. And then at this point, I feel like you guys know the drill. We're gonna go back in with that hella fine liner and we're gonna go and trace the outline as well as all the inward metal pieces. And then since this whole look relies on contrast and clean lines, I'm gonna go in with a makeup wipe and just make sure that everything is super clean. And then for the eyes, I've got the jumbo eye pencil here. This one's in black bean. And we're gonna do a super dark, smoky black eye. So we're gonna start with this as our base all over the lid, smudge it out. Also bring that on the lower lash line and into the water line. Then we're gonna layer the NYX gel liner and smudger on top of that. And this is super, super black and super pigmented, which is great because it's gonna make the contrast bump up even more. And it's just gonna really draw attention to those black contacts we put in. Speaking of contrast, we added a lot of shadows. We wanna add some highlights as well. I've got the Shimmer Down pigment here. This one's in O2. I took the Vichy Mineralizing Thermal Water and I actually sprayed my brush with that to pick up even more product. And I'm just highlighting the center of the metal sheets. Then for the lip, I've got the NYX Slide On, Glide On, Stay On, and definitely a Turn On Waterproof Extreme Shine Eyeliner. This one's in Platinum and I'm just gonna fill my entire lip with it. And then it's the exact same thing. Take the cream liner, basically do an ombre lip with it, and then line it with the fine liner. Okay, so this is the fun part where we get extra machinist. We're gonna add some metal bolts onto the face. Now with this makeup look, I really wanted to challenge myself and to make sure that I wasn't reliant on props or costume to bring this theme to life. I find a lot of machinist looks or even steampunk looks rely on wardrobe and I wanted this to be all about the makeup. So by adding these bolts, I think it really brought the whole look together. Then I'm gonna go in and add some mascara. I've got the double stack mascara here. And when I apply mascara, you can see all of my forehead wrinkles and bald cap wrinkles. 20 is looking great. And then we're gonna go one step further and add the illusion of some baby bolts on the rest of the metal sheets. So I'm just gonna take the liquid liner and dot it at the corner of each sheet. Oh yes, this is the part that is so fun to see get done, but it is so alarming and jarring to see on your own teeth. This is a Tooth Safe alcohol activated palette, so I'm just taking the black color and completely erasing my teeth. And if my dentist ever sees this, she is literally gonna be so mad at me. Anyways, moving on, I've got Jaclyn 2.0 here, and I'm just gonna kind of lightly outline where I wanna cut her in half. Now, I was super scared to do this because I was working so hard on it, and I didn't wanna cut it in half, but I knew that it had to get done for the makeup. So instead of just cutting it straight across, I wanted to still keep a curvature to it. Um, so I kind of followed the same curvature that my chin and jawline was cut at. You definitely want to be very strategic and intentional with the placement of this appliance, that way you get the maximum effect. So once you've marked out where you want it to go, you want to put the adhesive on both your head and onto the appliance, and then press it on and you are good to go. Then stick some adhesive onto the lower part of your face and onto the chin prosthetic, stick it on, and the whole look finally comes together. Okay, so that is it for the half human, half machine makeup tutorial. If you guys enjoyed this, I think that this makeup look is worthy enough of your vote, I would be so, so appreciative. You can go to faceawards.com and starting today, all the way up until June 21st, you can vote for me up to three times a day and help me get into the top 12. Your votes matter, you guys choose who gets into the next round. So vote, vote, vote. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye. or like delirious or what, but this is actually the funniest thing I've ever seen.